mission to us this morning as I notified ourselves on the platform yesterday night is a senior brother, um, a brother in the Lord who the Lord has used in building the lives of many. And personally, was when in senior high school, the Lord used this senior brother of mine to bless my life, to nurture me in the Lord. Those of you who may not know the school I attended, I attended the best college in Ghana. I'm a Santa Clausian. <laughs> At this other college, right? So it's the best college we have in Ghana for now. <laughs> um, so this our brother is um, he's a man who really loves God and loves God's work. I remember those days on campus, um, whilst we were sleeping, he would spend all night praying. And he really inspired us so much those years. And this morning, he's here with us. He's here with us. Hallelujah. Um, God has been using him greatly both in the prophetic and the evangelistic ministry. Um, and one thing about him is that he really loves the Church of Pentecost. <laughs> he loves the Church of Pentecost. He's the founder and the general overseer of Treasure Field Christian Center, headquartered in South Africa, with branches in Nigeria. And again, our senior brother in the Lord, a bishop in the vineyard of God, is the president of the Gabriel Nate Ministries. Last year in January, he was here to visit us, one of our evening services, and those of us who were here, we really encountered the Lord's presence during his ministration. People of God, I want us to be on our feet with the all glory unto God, and I welcome to the pulpit our brother and senior bishop, Bishop Gabriel Nati, to give us the word of God. Praise the Lord. Shall, shall we be upstanding? Let's be upstanding. Lift up your hands to heaven and express your love to the Lord. Lift up your voice and magnify him. Give him praise and give him glory. And if you can pray in the spirit, and lift up your voice. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just 60 seconds. Magnify him. Glorify him. Libra, Libra, Halu, Satala, Bahadia. Rio Sata, Halu, Iba, Satala, Bahadia. Himalo, Rosi, Iliat, Himale, Zikate, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Who be lifted above the God?
understand. Give us quick retentive memory, ability to pick the very signals, plant into us the grace to be able to buy your mind, reveal your counsel to us at this time, tea, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 We covet the anointing for quick understanding and also to pick up the things that God will be speaking to us. I will give you a pastor after my heart who will feed you. And uh, we want to thank God for the graces available in his servant who happens to lead this uh, great assembly. Amen. And he says if you would follow him according to God's word Jeremiah 3 16 you shall increase and you shall multiply I also want to salute all those that uh, support him in the pastorate and uh, the leadership of this uh, church let's give them a big big God bless you thank you very much amen there are churches you go and then you go bless them there are also churches you go and they bless you. Now, this church would always bless me because of the graces that make up the church. And when we talk about Pentecost, you are talking about something that is impactful. And the PIWC, uh, which is a contemporary version of it. And I'm excited because uh, it's a privilege to be part of of what God is going to do today, much more to also receive from this um, house. And when I talk about house, receiving from the house, I'm talking about the graces available. I told you, man of God, that before I preach, I need the anointing from Pentecost. And so he had to school me so I can be able to get the blessedness of today, which happens to be a blessed Sunday morning. We want to hit the ground running. I'll be speaking on engaging kingdom power to sustain the blessing. Engaging kingdom power to sustain the blessing. When we talk about engaging, we are speaking, or it connotes activating, it connotes It could not to activate, to enforce, or to provoke. To activate, engaging kingdom power to sustain the blessing. That means activating the kingdom power to sustain the blessing. Or enforcing all that there is in Christ of our God to sustain, enforcing the kingdom power to sustain the blessing sustain means continuation for an extended period or time continuation for an extended period or time it also speaks of without interruption you are not interrupted you continue something without interruption so engaging kingdom power to sustain the blessing, to keep the blessing, to sustain the blessing without interruption. Ephesians 1, 3 speaks about the blessedness of God and quoting what Paul said. He says, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Ephesians 1, 3, every spiritual blessing so you are blessed of God lift up your right hand and say I'm blessed of God I have the blessing of God upon my life it is reflective in my finance in my health in my business in my education if you believe that shout amen, amen. wonderful so you are blessed of God in Christ how to sustain the blessing you need to engage the kingdom power. The kingdom power. But have you heard how the mighty have fallen? That means that being empowered with the blessing and yet you lose it. How the mighty have fallen. One time, David sang a song and 
he dedicated that song to Jonathan in 2 Samuel 1, 27. How the mighty have fallen. How the mighty hero had fallen. It, it also speaks of the high and the lofty becoming lonely. High and the lofty becoming lonely. L-O-W-L-Y, lonely. Lofty becoming L-O-W-L-Y, lonely. How the high and the mighty. How those who are blessed in God lose their blessing and then they are next to nothing. You can sustain the blessing. You will sustain the blessing. You must sustain the blessing. We want to pick a case study and we want to focus on a man, a patriot, a prophet, and uh, consider um, his life and check his trajectory. Then we now meddle with it with uh, what we have today, which is the communion. So it's going to be a multifaceted presentation. I'd like you to give me your external an internal ear so you would be able to follow what God is saying. Genesis 26 and 12, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. The man, became, the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of heads and of great number of servants. We want to take 13, and if it can be projected, um, otherwise I will still read. Amen. Um, verse 13, are you there? We want to read together also as a church. One, two, three. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. 14, let's go. Let's go, one, two, three, let's go. Okay, we still go. Let's go to 20. Let's go to 20. 15, we want to read 15. Can we go, one, two, three, let's go. Let, let's start. So all the wells that his father's servant had dug in that time of in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up filling them with a 16. Let's go. Move away from us. We have be you have become too powerful for us. 17. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gera where he settled. 18. Isaac Nineteen, Isaac's servant died in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. Twenty. Let's let's add five more. Don't worry. Let's go. Twenty-one. Let's go. Twenty-one. Then the dark. Sit now. And twenty four and said, I am the God of your father Abraham, do not be afraid. And like a mass choir church, we want to read 25. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. Let's go. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Isaac did not prosper in a strange land. Isaac had a fundamental issue. And that was a crisis that he never succeeded on a strange land. Unlike Abraham that excelled in a strange land. I know probably some of you, many of us, are not from this land. So you have to journey to this land in order to work so you can get some goods and blessings and maybe go back. I have lived, um, after school, I went to South Africa, did uh, my studies there. So I had literally lived outside Ghana. And there are many people who are not in their very origin. They may have, to, they may have traveled for one thing or the other. Abraham sojourned and prospered in a strange land. Jacob sojourned and prospered in a strange land. But Isaac struggled. Each time as Isaac got a well, they seized it. He dug the first well. They, they seized it. Displaced him and asked him to go. He dug the second well. He dug the third well. He dug the fourth well. Then he got tired and left the fifth well until he raised an altar. There are many people under the sound of my voice, you are like Isaac. One thing you need to know is that a man by name Jacob struggled on a, good, a, a, a foreign land, got goose. And then when he was making his way back to his father, he wrestled with God, an angel, and got extra before he got home. Esther was a queen and she lived for 80 years. Now you see, Mordecai became a prime minister in a foreign land. Daniel was a prime minister and he set four kings. He was relevant for 60 years. Whichever party comes, they can't do without him. In a foreign land, Joseph, Joseph hit lamplight at age 30. And then he lived to 110. So that means that for 80 years, Joseph was relevant. 30 lived to 110. 30 to 110. 80 years. Didn't lose his age. Supremely relevant. Now, you understand that all these were men, Jews, that went to a different land, and they, saw, they excelled. They were successful. But Isaac did not. One. His father left him many wells. They seized all until he had only one. It's called reduction. We want to focus on the crisis of Isaac. Reduction. There are many of you under the sound of my voice. You used to have four accounts. You have only one. And even that one is epileptic. You had four means of getting money. Streams of income. You had several channels of excelling. But now you can see they are all shrinking. His father gave him wells. They seized all the wells. He had only one, reduction. Whatever stands as a plague of reduction, eating your health, your finance, is cursed today in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be the loudest. Whatever stands as a power put in place to make sure you are reduced is hereby destroyed by the efficacy of the blood in Jesus' name. Let your amen be the loudest in this place. They reduced him. Number two, he had to abandon the things he was doing. He went to a land, at some point he even let Rehoboth, went to Bathsheba. Nobody forced him, but after they had seized four of the wells, he had to leave Rehoboth. 
You know what it means? He abandoned the project. There is a plague that stops people from completing what they start. You start so well, all of a sudden, some rock comes to hit you and pieces your life. You never complete what you have started. And there are projects that have been left somewhere. You drop some books, you wanted to be a lawyer, you drop some books, you wanted to be a doctor. Now you have stepped into your stigmatized background. But I came to tell you, in the name of Jesus, whatever you have left and forsaken, the anointing of God is giving you power to take it back. Take back your health, take back your wealth, take back your glory, take back your speed, take back your anointing. You used to fast and pray, but now no zeal and enthusiasm to fast. You are taking it back in the name of Jesus. There is a grace upon your life that whatever you touch becomes gold. But look at you. You are in a place where you are confused and perplexed. You are taking back the anointing. I came to tell three people here, the anointing of God is coming on your life right now. You are taking back your glory in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be the loudest in this place. One attribute of Isaac was that he was a great man but was not a fighter. Jacob had to wrestle. Abraham had to gather his 318 guards and they conquered four nations. But Jacob and Isaac was Relax. They seize it from him, he won't fight. They will seize it from him, he won't fight. There are times the devil does not know your grammar. In fact, he doesn't know your grammar, your eloquence and your big vocabulary. He knows fight. And if you cannot fight, you can have some stuff. I have lived in the land and by the grace of God, I'm planting churches in places where you will see that literally this can be. This can be. And God has helped me to be a, plant, a church planter. And there are forces that will fight you. There are forces that will fight you. We even buy properties like we are buying loaves of bread in a strange land. In a strange land. And God gives us lands that we know literally that the size is so big that they wonder, how did this guy get this? Three weeks ago, a few guys came over there and they were checking the land and they said they were sent by some people to come and check the land because they want to take it from us. I'm talking about in Nigeria. Where we are building, they want to take it back because they are not of our religion and so they want to fight us. And you, you will literally pack your kaya and leave that place. Why do you But you need to have a fighting spirit in Christ. You need, to, you need to dare some things. You need to dare. If you don't dare, you can't have it. Whatever you can confront, you can conquer. You need to dare. You need to dare. And I came to tell you some of you little dreams, they hit you with, you just disappear. Oh, it's time for you to take this anointing and fight. It's called the anointing to fight. He said to Jeremiah, I've ordained you, anointed you today to also destroy, to build. Whilst you are building the good, we are destroying the bad. Whilst you are building the good, we are destroying the evil. And we came in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever is that altar in that family sitting and watching you and placing a limit on your life, you need to fight and say, enough is enough. Isaac was not a fighter. Mm. Isaac was not a fighter. In many respects to Abraham and Jacob, he was not a fighter. The problem with Isaac was that he had something called get and lose. And there are many of you here, you get something, you lose it. Get and lose. He gets a, a, a well, he loses it. He gets a well, he loses it. Now, he, he was just getting and losing and getting and losing. That get and lose spirit is a spirit that makes you, you got t three million, oh, that's big here, but you got 300,000 Ghana CD and then you lose it. You don't know how it disappears. You got some breakthrough, it fizzles out of your hands. 
like a wind. You get and you lose. Isaac was getting but losing. Getting and losing. What is get and lose? Get and lose is when you have an icy breakthrough. You pick an ice block in your palm, it disappears. What is get and lose? Get and lose is when you are plagued with opportunities but it evaporates. When your vision is impaired. When you have what we call opportunity farming or farming in opportunity. That means that you don't even have opportunity to express yourself. Get and lose is when you have a trigger dream. Almost getting a breakthrough, one negative dream hits your mind and then that's how you lose that breakthrough. Get and lose is when you become an interview celebrity. You have been interviewed and interviewed and interviewed but no job. Get and lose. Get and lose is when you have maintenance lapses. Oh, if you have a vehicle and you must be paying and you don't maintain it, you will lose it. Especially if you default for long. Get and lose spirit. is when you have spiritual weakness. Spiritual weakness. And so we are talking about a remedy, how to engage kingdom power. And when we talk about kingdom power, we are talking about that which is in God called purity. I just saw house of purity and prayer. And these two virtues are kingdom powers. So we want to connect to um, purity, prayer, redemption, praises, the cross, the communion. All these are what we call the kingdom forces. The kingdom forces. You need to engage, activate, and deploy these kingdom forces to make impact. Purity. They will possess their possession over that one because what? On that mountain, there shall be holiness. And then they would have the power to possess their possession. You need to know the purity prayer. Some of you can pray three hours. Now, he, he, my, my friend was just telling you when I was in school. I pray more now than even when I was in school. I pray more now than even when I was in school. Because the impact of any minister should be prayer. You can't do without prayer. And I fast more than even... And every week, I, I fast three days dry. Every week. Every week. There's a three day I will have to set and not eat morning to the third day. Because that's the only thing I know. And that's the only thing that gives me power. Purity, prayer, redemption, praises. The cross, the gospel. We are not ashamed of the gospel and communion. My emphasis today, drawing from the fact that we need to come to the lost table, we want to engage two things, looking at what get and lose means, engaging maybe one, which is a communion, to deal with these two attributes that have plagued the church. I said to you, dullness is one of the things that the devil would always want to use to prevent you from buying the mind of God. They gave me a piece of land, two of them. One looked juicy, juicy, juicy. The other one wasn't. And when I was about choosing the one that could be fixed, because one of the anointing God has given me is anointing of ownership. That is why when I come here, I love to take the anointing here to add to what... I love to buy properties and properties for Jesus. Any piece of land you give me opportunity, I will buy them and get sure, make sure I raise a church. I have made up my mind that before I die, I will have 200 churches I will build. Not church, me, Gebronati. I want to build for God, my own money. So far, I've done about eight of them. I'm not getting sponsorship from anyone. I'm, I'm building for God. 
And that is what I want to do. So the least opportunity, we grab it. Last year, we came over to Ningo Pram Pram, bought a piece of land I want to build, a 3,000 seater and a university. Now, 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 hear me please, my friend, listen to me. If you can't hear God's mind and cannot buy the uh, mind of God, at this time, tea, you would struggle. Christianity is not tea and coffee prayer and um, eat chicken peri peri. No, 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 no. You need to be sensitive. In Isaiah 42 and verse number 18, God speaking to us, who is blind, who is deaf? He wasn't talking about the unbeliever. He says, my servant, those who are perfect. That means that you can still be a Christian and you'll be blinded. Who is blind but my servant? Who is deaf like my messenger? I send. Who is blind like he that is in covenant with me? How can you be in covenant with God and still be blind? He said, blind like the servant of the Lord. Let's get to verse 18. We take it to verse 20. Um, verse 19, I beg your pardon. Who is blind? Okay. Now, 18 says, ye, okay, 19, 18, hear ye deaf, okay. Now, if God says, that's 18, if God says, hear ye deaf, I thought you said the person is deaf, so why would the person hear? See ye blind. I thought you said the person is blind, so why do you say see? He says that he, what God was saying is that he, these folks ought to have seen clearly, know what is, in, in, what is about happening in 2022, 2023, but they never see. So even though they've got their eyes open, they are still blind. Hear ye deaf. Now look at verse 19, amazing. It goes to say that my messenger, how can you be a messenger of God and not hear? That means there are many people that are supposed messengers but do not hear from God. And I'm not talking about preacher, I'm talking about you. You. 20, look at what 20 says. See many things, observe it not. See many things. 20. You have seen many things, but you pay no attention. Your ears are, your ears are open, but you do not listen. And God is speaking to you and I that in this place, in this time, we need to deal with dullness. It is laziness for a child of God not to pray one hour. You are not too busy. You can't be too busy. You are not over busy. I mean, it's laziness. Otherwise, you, are, you, are you busier than, than, than David who prays, he prays three times. He prays seven times. I said he prays God seven times. He will pray three times. In one day, a king or a president of a nation. Are you a president of a nation? Are you too busy? Busier than David? Daniel, as a prime minister, could buy God's man a specific time he goes to pray. Laziness has kept us looking for how to engulf ourselves and clothe ourselves with excuse but I, I want to see a group of people imagine and I'm part and you are part who can stay on our knees for seven hours and can pray six hours and can pray three hours and can fast until God has spoken you are not eating and God is raising a group of people who will be able to access heaven with his mind at this time too and you are part of it lift up your voice shout yes Laziness. The church is playing with laziness. We are over busy and not even busy. Otherwise busy for, for nothing. Busy bodies. But God is saying to you and I, it's time for us to wake up. Spiritual weakness. Do you know that this thing called get and lose is so, so important? We need to deal with it. A man came in Lagos. This man had built 32 bedroom house. And when he had done house, house um, um, warming and he was about moving in there, he heard some noise after the celebration and the, they wanted to open the house. So he left the place. Each time he gets to the house, he hears that thing. So he couldn't stay in that place. 
Nobody hears it. He's the only one that hears that. So he left the 32 um, bedroom house he's built and went to buy another land and build 36. And by the time he was about checking in into that house, they summoned him and they told him, guy, the land is, has an issue and they are in court. They never brought this thing up until he has finished 36 bedroom building. And the, 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 the judgment reads that, the court says that we know the building is yours, but the land is for this person. So you can take the building and give him his land. And that is where stroke came hitting him. After he had worked, 32 buildings didn't enjoy, 36 didn't enjoy, he was plagued by stroke. And there are many of you here without this element where you can buy the mind of God, you will literally not know that a house, a land, a property is for someone. You buy it with your money. But God wants you to get to a place by kingdom power to be able to deal with certain things that ought to be dealt with and to hear his voice. In this communion service, we want to emphasize in clear terms that communion gives us access to hear from God. Is one of the kingdom powers. I told you, purity, prayer, redemptive work, which is redemption, praise, the cross, and communion. In Luke 22, 19 to 20, we see how Jesus spelled out the reason for the communion. Remembrance, 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 remembrance. You must not walk on this earth and just leave this earth without an element that must put people in remembrance when they mention your name. As a matter of fact, he inherited a name and that name is just for, that, for, for everyone to know that he once came upon this earth and even the earth succumbs to that name and even the earth succumbs to that name and he shall be given a new name and simply is about remembrance. Remembrance. You didn't open a womb to come to this earth and walk through the face of the earth and go without any impact. Remembrance. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Remembrance. Some of you must build the next three, 15 years to come, you should be able to feed 1,000 people. Remembrance. Some of you must have organizations that will employ people. Remembrance. Some of you must build churches that will be able to say that this is what God did through this man. Remembrance. There is a man that when you go to the lab and you want to access the Pentecost office, his name is boldly written there, Remembrance. Even though he came here and is gone, we still remember him. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. There is something God is going to do through you, with you, for you. That even nations, even generations, when they hear that God did that, they will keep resounding your name. There are three people here. The anointing of God is coming on you. Shout amen. They are now five. Shout amen. They are now seven. Shout amen. It is now 15. Shout amen. 25. Shout amen. Remembrance. Remembrance. Then he goes on to say, and he took the bread and broke it and gave to them. And what happened? Their eyes were open. Their eyes were open. That means we can access spiritual things by eating that which is on the lost table. Their eyes were open. That means that your visions, you must have visions, you must have dreams. Do you know what gave birth to this great commission? It's about the fact that some people were doing church and they didn't really have these visionary encounters. And a group of people came and they said, now on the day of Pentecost, we had people who could pick up signal from heaven. And listen to me, if we lose the essence, then we have lose the value. We must get to the place where we can have our eyes open to see 10 years from now, 15 years from now. It comes on the Lord's table. And when he gave them the bread, 
their eyes were open and they knew him. And I came to tell somebody coming to the Lord's table is not a religious act, should not be considered as a religious act. It's a kingdom power agenda that gives you access to God's presence, that gives you access to signals, that gives you access to spiritual virtue, that gives you power to prophesy. It shall come to pass in the last days, I shall pour my spirit upon all flesh and the sons and daughters shall prophesy. God wants to raise prophets in our midst. God wants to raise apostles in our midst. God wants to raise evangelists in our midst. God wants to raise pastors in our midst. God wants to raise people. He would express himself through them in the area of the gift of healing, the gift of miracle, the gift of word of wisdom, the gift of faith, the gift of word of knowledge. God wants to do something that faith will be bad through people when they hear that God did that through you. And I came to tell somebody, it's a raining season now. It's a season where the rains of heaven drops upon you. Receive revival from heaven as you engage this kingdom power. Even as you come to the Lord's table, whatever constitutes spiritual laziness in your prayer life, in your fasting life, is going to be dealt with by the power of the Holy Ghost. It shall be flushed out of your being lift up your voice shall break through and God wants to raise people who be given to prayer fasting and holiness and he comes on the platform of what we call kingdom kingdom power I like you to be upstanding you want to pray a prayer it is so far. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands to heaven. And I have the keyboards. Yeah, do something for me. There are a few folks here, you in your spirit, man. You know you have left the fire somewhere. You know your zeal and enthusiasm is gone. You've come to a stage, a place in life where you've lost your kingdom power. You can go four days without devotion and you are cool. You can do one whole week without prayer and you are fine. The only time you come to church, I mean the only time you get your self-service is when you come to church. But you should have services in your homes before even coming to church. When you drive a car to a filling station, and you want to have it service, they take away the old oil and they're putting new. The reason why we come for service and we are here is because we take the old and get new. But many of you have been carrying the old oil for three years. Or you work in the department, one department or the other, you play some stuff, one instrument, or you sing or part of the prayer. But in your heart of heart, you know you have lost connection. In this service, you want to say, Lord, I need this kingdom power. Particularly when I come to your table, revive me once again. Mm. When I come to your table, Lord, stir up the gift. Stir up the anointing. Let me literally walk in my office and they would want to say, who just entered this office? Because I am carrying the presence of God. Where I literally enter homes and folks are sick and then the person who is sick jacks back out of the bed and say, I'm healed. You didn't pray, but the anointing of God is all over you. Oh, when you enter church and those who are demonized will not stay in front. They will literally go to the back because something like fire is, is all around them. And they want to confess, I'm a witch, I'm a wizard. They will confess, help me take this thing out of my heart. That is that which God wants to do. And one moment, if you are in this place, every eyes closed, please, and you have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior. Lord, prepare me to receive
you say you have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you want to say yes to him today. Because you want to come to his table and receive virtue. You want to say, my life is not mine. Take over. Take it to Lord. You want to say, Lord, take my heart, my life, my will, my thought, my emotions, my mind. In this service, you know, per perhaps you are still coming to church, but you have not made him the Lord of your life. Every eyes closed, please, in this service, you want to say yes to Jesus. Wherever you are, I'd like you to lift up your hands. I'm going to pray with you. You want to say yes to Jesus. You want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. You want to say yes to Jesus. Yes to Jesus. You want to say yes to Jesus. Lift up your hands. I want to pray with you. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm saying fellowship. Kononia. Fellowship. Participation. There is no kononia. There is no fellowship. There is no link. You want to say, Lord, I don't want to serve a God I don't know, a God I can't see, a God I can't hear, a God who doesn't speak to me. I want to get back to track so I can hear your voice. Who is blind but my servant? You want to say yes to Jesus wherever you are, lift up your hands. If your hands are lifted, I want to pray with you. God bless 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 you. If your hands are lifted, I want to pray with you. I came for you. And this is a service for you. I'd like you to walk to me quickly wherever you are. Thank you. Come to me. God bless you. Your hands are lifted. Come to me. Come to me. Your hands are lifted. Come to me. God bless you. 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 Maro Shahadaba. Manti Soprada. Elevo Shahadia. Igemonti Indo Zian de Lenda on Katose Kia Kapara. Erendolo Shaka. Yes to Jesus. 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 Yes. To Jesus. yes, to Jesus. yes to Jesus. And there are some folks here, you used to be on fire and you have lost it. You want to say, Lord, I need this fire. Walk to me. I'm waiting for you. Walk to me. I need this fire. You can call it rededication, whatever it is. But I need back this fire. Walk to me. I'm waiting for you. I'm counting 20. It's 19. It's 18. It's 17. It's 16. It's 15. It's 14. It's 13. I'm counting. I'm counting. It's 10. You have nine more. You have eight more. Maru Shahadi Zalada. Maru Shahada Bashia. Eleanor Ziantala Tukuma. Mente Anta Koshe Kalaba. Manto Sebrada. Anta Bashia. I need you. I fire be in me revive me let the gift you put in my heart find expression I receive grace for a healthy prayer life I receive grace for purity I receive grace for fire even fire for you Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands on your tummy right now. And Father, let a gift be 
express. Oh, let this gift in them find expression. Jesus. Use them, use them, use them, use them. And every plague of laziness, sin is cast now in the name of Jesus. I declare, devil, take your filthy hands of them. They are hereby called touch not. They are hereby called touch not. They are hereby called touch not. You can't touch their life destinies. No way. They are for Jesus. God use them with them, use them mightily, work in them, work through them, work for them, do what no man can do in their lives, in Jesus name, amen, amen. amen. take your seat, let's give Jesus a hand right now, I have only one minute to go, one moment to be upstanding, one moment I've got only one minute to go, close your eyes, there is someone you are having a back pain and it's, it's at that back side, the hand of God is coming on your life right now, a young lady you want to pick your things and leave your parent to go and stay with somebody else the person has promised you marriage god says that person is going to fail you don't move don't move i'm seeing someone also you have an issue it's like your your left shoulder the spirit of god is healing you right now your left shoulder thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father when someone had a dream and you set fire like a mattress and then it it, it got it just extinguished and then disappeared it looks like you used to have a prophetic gift but you have lost it i see you get it back again Jesus. get it back again Name i see a young Jesus. lady he's been attacked by bees bees and i'm seeing your destiny has been attacked god is delivering you from every satanic attack right now thank you father Thank him. Lift up a voice and glorify him. Give him praise. 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 Give him praise.